Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture we will talk about the if statement in Java. Here is our outline. We will see what is the if statement and after that we will see some examples. Let's get started. What is the if statement in Java? It is a statement that is used to execute a piece of code based on a condition. It looks like this. We will use the if keyword followed by parentheses. And inside the parentheses we will put the boolean expression or the condition. And after that we will have one statement. So if the boolean expression evaluates to true, this statement will be executed. So the first statement that we will write after the if statement will belong to the if statement. And it doesn't matter if you write the statement over here or you write it on the same line. I'm writing it on a new line and left some indentation to make the code more clear. Now what if you want to execute more than one statement over here? In this case, we will put some braces. Now these braces belong to the if statement. And inside the braces, we can put more than one statement. Now, if the condition is true, all these statements over here inside the braces will be executed. Now, what if the boolean expression is false? In this case, this statement will not be executed, and also, all these statements will not be executed, okay? So, the statement or the statements are executed if the boolean expression evaluates to true. And if the boolean expression evaluates to false, the statement or the statements will be skipped as if they does not exist in the code, all right? Now let's see some examples. Over here, I'm going to say, if true, execute this statement. So obviously the condition is true, right? So this statement will be executed. Another example, I'm saying if false, execute this statement. So as you can see, the condition is false. So this statement over here will not be executed. And note that I'm leaving some indentation over here to indicate that this statement is inside the if statement. So let me show you another example. Suppose that we have this code. I'm saying if true, then execute this statement over here. I'm printing inside the if statement. And after that, we have this statement over here. I'm printing outside the if statement. So suppose that we will run this program. Then we will see this output. Inside the if statement will be executed and outside the if statement will be executed. And this statement over here was executed because the condition is true. And have a look at the indentation. We can see that the if statement and this statement over here are on the same level. And this statement is inside the if statement, right? Suppose that you write the code like this. You might think that this statement and this statement are both inside the if statement, but this is not true. And I'm going to show you this example. We have the same code, but now the condition is false. If we run the program, we will see only this string printed. So only this statement over here was executed. And this statement was not executed because the condition is false. So this statement is not inside the if statement, all right? Now let's see another example. Suppose we have this code. And as you can see, I put some braces for the if statement because I want to put more than one statement inside it. And in this case, the condition is true. And over here, we have two statements. I'm printing inside the if statement two times. And outside the braces, we have this statement over here. So in this case, if we run the program, we will see these three strings printed. So these two statements are executed because the condition is true. And after we finish executing the if statement, we will continue executing the main method and we'll execute this statement over here. So this is why we see this output. And again, have a look at the indentation. It's obvious that these two statements are inside the if statement. And this statement over here is at the same level as the if statement, okay? Now let's see the same example, but now the condition is false. And in here we have the same statements, and also over here we have the same statement. If we run the program, we will see this output. So, because the condition is false, these two statements will not be executed. And after we finish executing the if statement, we will execute this statement over here. So only this statement was executed and we will see this output. Now you might be asking why I'm concentrating on this idea too much. This is because a lot of beginners make a lot of mistakes regarding this. So now let's continue. Suppose that we want to find the maximum of two numbers using the if statement. So in our main methods, we have two variables, x and y. x is 5 and y is 10. Now I want you to pause the video and write a program that prints the maximum between x and y using if statements. Okay, so we have our two numbers, x and y. I'm going to use an if statement to test if x is greater than y. So if x is greater than y, then I'm going to print the maximum is x, all right? 
Now, if x is not greater than y, then this statement will not be executed. And I will continue writing some code. So after that, I'm going to test if y is greater than x. So if this condition is true, I'm going to print the maximum is y. So up until this point, if x is the maximum or the y is the maximum, then the maximum will be printed, all right? But what if x is equal to y? In this case, this condition will be false and also this condition will be false. So nothing will be printed. So I'm going to add a third if statement and I'm going to say if y is equal to x, then print the numbers are equal. Of course, this if statement over here was not part of the program. And if you only wrote this if statement and this if statement, your solution is correct. But I wanted to show you that in programming, we must take every case into consideration. Now I want you to solve an assignment. I want you to write a program that reads an integer from the user. And after that, the program will determine if the integer is even or odd. So this is an example of running the program. First of all, I'm printing enter an integer. And after that, the user can enter an integer as you can see. And when the user presses enter, I'm printing five is odd. Another example, if the user enters 10, for example, I'm printing 10 is even. In the next video, we will see the solution to this assignment. This is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.